Greetings toy fans, this is Jim, and welcome to my workbench. Well, the subject of this video happens to be the Lionel Milk Car number 3472. And this is something that I've been fascinated with over the last several months as I'm trying to integrate different railroad accessories into my Tyco US-1 trucking set. Now, I realize that the Tyco set's supposedly HO, and this is O-gauge, and there is a considerable size difference. But nonetheless, it's uh, my son and I really don't care about scale as much as we want to integrate some fun stuff into it. And if we can make it work, then awesome. But what's really uh, gotten me into this is just the simplicity of the design and yet the functionality and the geniuses that those designers were at Lionel at the post-war period. Now, before I get into the differences between these cars and how to make them function again, if yours is not, uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of this. So I wrote, I took some notes here as I was reading about some information online. Lionel made four different versions of these cars from 1947 to 1960. Now, I have two versions of 3472 here today. The first version was 3462, which came out from 47 to 48, just two years. And then the one that I have uh, had a six-year period of, a uh, six-year run of 49 to 54. And Lionel produced four different versions of the car that I have. And then they had 3482, only produced for the 1954 year. And then they changed the color of it to a brown car and gave it a new number, 3662, and that was produced from 1955 through 1960. And then they stopped production altogether and didn't resume production of this until, I'd say, the last uh, 30 years. I think, well, maybe the 90s, I'm just guessing here, but at least the 2000s. Now, on the 3472, this is the first version that Lionel produced. And uh, this is kind of the one that I was hoping to buy first, because I just wanted a junker body that I could hack and then try to integrate into the trucking set. But it's got uh, aluminum doors here, and it also has an aluminum hatch. And the body's plastic, but you can see it's a little bit worse for wear. The, the pinholes have been broken out of three out of the four, and this one's just about gone there. But nonetheless, it'll function for what I need it to do. The version... 3, which is this one, has an off-white body, and it's got uh, plastic doors, and it also has a uh, plastic hatch that spans the entire top, whereas this one just spans only half of the top. Now, when you get into these, if yours is not working, the first thing that you want to do is to carefully pry with a screwdriver underneath these tabs. Uh, you will break... Uh, break these off if you don't do that. This one happens to have some inner tabs underneath that cause a little bit more of a problem as you're trying to get it off. But if you're careful, you'll have no problems whatsoever. I've taken uh, this one off several times and haven't broken anything on it. The only thing here is just a little black smudge, which it looks like it's just a little bit of grease that could be taken off. And that was the first one that I got and it was in such nice condition that I did not want to hack into it. In fact, the whole thing was in really nice condition, but it wasn't working properly. It needed a lot of adjustments. And I'll talk about that as we get through the video. Now, looking at these two cars, you would think, okay, the earlier version, I mean, they almost look identical. But mechanically, they're not. Uh, they're similar, but, but very, very different. Uh, now, the problem with the early version is that I noticed happens to be with this arm here, and it gets magnetized. So, uh, in essence, how this works is you drop your milk cans in like so, okay? And then through the electrical charge, it goes to a coil here, pulls this plunger in. The plunger then moves this man out, the milk man out, and if it moves hard enough, then it moves this little door here, and it releases, it goes past where the milk can is, and then forces it out, and then he shoots it out into wherever you need it to go. It, it's just that simple. This is an improved design. And I'll take this apart and show you how to do this. Now, it was missing, incidentally, both screws and the washer and the spring back here. And those you can uh, get at the local hardware store. If you're missing the screw, it's uh, just a number two screw 
uh, pan head and all you need to do is uh, just find the smallest length that they have it's not the right length that Lionel had but I end up liking it a lot better oh I guess I should show you the action of this first now we'll do a little demonstration on how these work so I've got this hooked up to my Tyco power pack that gives it enough voltage amps that it can power it and so we'll just do two of these here and you'll get to see how this operates okay. There we go. Now, the one behind it, the later version, actually, I think, works a, a lot better. Again, it's an improved design. And you will discover, I think, that you'll see that it moves a lot faster and more efficiently. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we'll disconnect the wires. And uh, <clears throat> getting back into the design here, if you need to replace these screws, which mine were, this one was missing both of those as well as the spring and the washer to the plunger. Um, it's just a number two screw you can get at a hardware store. Find the smallest size that they have. Ace Hardware is where I went. The big box stores usually don't carry the really small stuff. Again, now here's here's how this, uh, here's a problem with this arm. So you'll notice here, this is the arm that cut folds back when the man moves forward. So this little metal piece right here pushes that arm back. And then as he comes back this way, this arm moves back and it is supposed to push the can out towards the milkman. The problem with this system is you'll see that it's attached to the same plate that the coil is. And I couldn't figure out why isn't this moving? Is it getting jammed up on the channel here? What's the deal? Or, you know, the housing? Um, it was because it was getting magnetized along with the coil or, or along with the plunger. And so it's made of steel. So is the plate. So is the pen. And so we move this far and then it would stop and you'd have to really force it. So what I ended up doing was putting a or gluing a piece of plastic dowel in there. And you can get that through Evergreen Styrene Plastics. I think that's uh, 3 16 if I'm not mistaken. Maybe 7 30 seconds. I don't know. It was the uh, second to largest size I had. And that did the trick. That was able to push that forward and give it enough oomph to go. Now I'll take this one apart here and you'll see the difference. This one has uh, regular flathead screws on it doesn't have Phillips like what I bought so if you're looking for something that's authentic you'll want to uh, probably buy some junker ones if you want to restore it to its original set now you'll look at here and you'll see the coil is just itself there's nothing else attached to the coil so this arm hinges on the body of the where the the channel goes for the milk cans to drop down much better design, much better. All right, so here are some issues that you can have with your milk car. The most common one, and this is between the two of these and for videos that I've watched, is the electrical insulation. It'll be cracked, and that will cause a short. You'll want to replace it. I watched a video on how a guy did this and uh, how he replaced it. If you are comfortable with soldering, this is a real easy fix. What you do is you peel back this gummy tape here. Now, what you, uh, to get the gummy tape off, the simplest thing to do is just wet it with some lighter fluid, and then that'll loosen up the gum. You can peel it back. You can rotate this around, and or the coil around in order to get these uh, two out, and then just replace your wiring. This one happens to go through a hole and the bottom to attach to the trucks. And then this one wire goes through a hole through the top and then just uh, relaxes on top of the mechanism and then goes through a hole in the frame there. And then it solders to the truck. Now I won't be using this as a train car, so I'm not gonna be soldering them to the coil. But again, it's a very simple process and there's another 
video out there on how to restore that if you need a little more detail on that. Now I'm going to pull that whole thing out and just show you the mechanism here. Now the man is attached with a spring clip and it's a very light spring clip that you can use and, and it just takes uh, meaning it's not really tight on there and you can just take a screwdriver and just pry it off pretty easily as long as he doesn't spin around. There we go. So here's the spring clip. You can even bend that in just a bit to tighten the fitting a little bit more. And there's the man. Now, and you can see the plastic piece that I attached to that. Now, that's if you have the earlier version. The later version uh, is uh, the arm is attached to the... Uh, no, I guess later version is exactly the same. So, ignore that statement. Uh, but it doesn't have this ribbing here. Um, you see there on the back, it's just plain flat. And the problem with that uh, door was it wasn't... Pushing, this wasn't pushing it far enough due to the magnetism. Now with this guy, um, or this arm and the milkman here, it's uh, this whole plate needs to be fairly flat and level. You can see where how things are set there. And then here's that little door that slides through, and that has a little bent area there in which this arm attaches and brushes by and shoves that whole thing forward. Now let's talk about the plunger for just a bit. There's been some discussion out there on videos that I've watched that you need to clean out the plunger area and make sure the magnetism is fine. You may even need to replace the coil, and that's a whole other video tutorial on that. But uh, if you're missing the spring and the washer, which I was on this one, uh, you can just go to a hardware store. I just bought this little box of springs as I need springs for all different sorts of projects. This measures uh, about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit more, nine sixteenths, and it's got fairly light tension. You get something with too much tension and then the plunger won't move forward, can't actuate it. Now since this one's discombobulated, we'll take a look at the spring here and compare the two. And uh, you'll notice that the original one's a little more conical. You can buy those on eBay for a dollar. They're not that expensive, but uh, then you got to pay shipping and so forth. As far as plunger goes, they're basically identical, uh, with the exception that this little pin here that moves the man, this one's bent on the older version, and this one's straight. Now, the washer is pretty specialized. I couldn't find anything like it at the hardware store. And so what I ended up getting was a metric one. And I think this is an M5, and it, it did the job. As you can see, it works and gives just the right amount of tension to go in the coil. We'll put that back. Now, the, the part that needed the most work on this thing and the other one was just basically the play of the whole unit. You may want to polish up the entire area here. You'll see I polished up where... Uh, things are moving. You can see where it's scraped there on the bottom. It is attached with one screw there and then a little tab that bends in underneath. So you can take the whole plate off if you need to. This ha this piece happens to be riveted on and so there's no way of removing it. Okay, And then it has, that screw provides a little bit of a stop for it for moving. But if this plate is bent then you're going to have to use a little bit of finesse, take a screwdriver underneath and kind of pry it up to make sure that it's writing properly. This little tab here, also the same thing. Remember that the arm from here rides, has to slide over this little metal tab right here inside. And so if this isn't perfectly perpendicular, then you'll have some problems. And that's the biggest issue with these, why they won't work. It's not that the mechanics or the electronics won't work. It's that things are slightly bent with use or somebody working on them and not knowing what they're doing. And then uh, things won't move properly. 
Now, when you're going to reassemble this back together, what you want to do is you want to put the man there, and you'll notice he's got a little slot. It's that triangular slot. Now, th that's different than this one. This one's got an L-shaped groove in the, the newer version. I don't know which one's better. Uh, maybe this version's a little bit better. And you'll notice it moves pretty freely. Okay. Then what I end up doing is I end up taking the, the coil back. And you'll simply just shove that arm into there. This tab has to go over the back side. And then you want to put your plunger in. Then all you have to do is take your two screws. Now, I, I happen to like these longer screws better than the ones that Lionel Original provided because I can, with my fat fingers, I can get them started where those other ones are so small. I spend a devil of a time just trying to get them started. There you go. You can see that the little issues come along. And I know they're not the original, but no one's going to see it once you get a cover on. Okay, then you're going to put your snap ring on. There's a little slot down there. I'm not sure what the extended post here is for. There's a place for a snap ring there. Maybe those of you that know this uh, stuff can tell me. Okay, and now we're all set. It's all ready to go. Then you're going to want to ch check the action for it to make sure that things do work as they should. And if it doesn't move smoothly, uh, you'll know that, you know, just uh, hook, hook it up to your power pack and see how things are moving. Uh, listen to where things are scraping, getting hung up, and then slightly use your, gently use your screwdriver to pry under things and to make things more level. You may have to bend it by hand. The metal is really soft. And so that may be a contributing factor into why these get out of adjustment. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful and a little bit of history on the Lionel Milk Car. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you like these type of videos. Take care and we'll see you in the future.